but to get to this place that God has shown them. God, I thank you for life and standing by his side and praying for him, encouraging him and ministering to the minister. Now, God, I pray that you bless this marriage. I pray that you bless this ministry and use them to your glory. Now, Lord, as we come to preaching time, I pray that you anoint us. Give us the anointing that makes preaching easy. I pray for fresh wind, fresh revelation, fresh knowledge, a fresh bread from heaven. God, feed us tonight until we won't no more. God, give us a word tonight that will convict us, convert us, and convince us. Give us a word tonight that's filled with information and inspiration so that we can have application. Feed us tonight, God, until we won't no more. Here we are.
spirit of the Lord saying that because you God brought you back to this man of God because he's a man of God that can handle, watch this, not your gift but your anointing. Yeah, 
because he's got a true heart. He's an authentic pastor, and when they walk in the room, the pastor will be able to look at you and say, no, that ain't the one. Because young lady, I see you on television. I see you on all kinds of stuff. And it ain't gonna be because of your gift, it's gonna be because you are anointed. Oh my God, have mercy. See, some of y'all got an attitude. You better learn how to lay hands on yourself and say, I'm anointed. to be 
able to say that the curse is reversed. When I was a little boy, uh, when my mother was pregnant with me, uh, my mother, uh, I'm, I'm, you're looking at a miracle. <laughs> you don't even realize it. Uh, my mother and my father had been trying to get pregnant for years. And, and they couldn't get pregnant, and, and the doctor was going to, to perform a procedure called a DNC. And, 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 and they were getting ready to do the DNC. My father took her to the hospital. She, she went through all of the procedures that she had to go through in order to get prepared for this DNC. Uh, what, what a DNC is nowadays is like uh, what we would call an abortion. That, that's, that's what they did back then, those days. They would, they would wipe the, 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 the womb clean of, of all kinds of cysts and all kinds of blood. And they would cleanse the womb so that she could get pregnant. And so um, she was going to have that procedure in the morning. Um, but my father got a phone call from my mother uh, early in the morning uh, crying. So he ran to the hospital. And what happened was the doctor told my mother, he said, now we're going to get ready to, to prepare to do the procedure on you. And, 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 and once it's over, you know, you'll be able to go home and, 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 and heal up. And, and prayerfully, you'll be able to have children. He said, I want to run one more test uh, before we perform this procedure on you because you got an issue of blood. You're, you're, you're flowing and seeing that you should be flowing. You got a blood problem and, and I want to fix it for you. And, and what the doctor told her, Pastor Austin, said, I want to run one more test. Somebody said, one more test. And so when, when he ran one more test, what my mother didn't know was he was just taking a test of precaution. He ran a pregnancy test. When, when, he ran the, when, he ran, when he ran the pregnancy test, he walked back in the room and he said, Ma'am, um, um, we, we cannot perform the DMC. She said, because, because if we run into a problem, she said, what kind of problem could we have run into? She said, blood is all in my womb and I need you to get it out so that I can have a baby. He said, Ma'am, uh, you, you, you don't, you don't, you don't, you won't be able to take this DNC, he said, because you're pregnant. She said, how can I be pregnant? I got cysts, I got tumors all in my womb. How can I be pregnant with all of this blood? He said, now I don't know how you're pregnant, but there's a baby in your belly. And I, I need to help somebody to understand why I qualify to speak to your womb and my ears because I am a baby that was born. And what God was saying to me is, I had you covered in the blood from the beginning.
And his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came not to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man. And the dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother. And, look at somebody and say, she was a widow. Yeah. 
and that friends and you might have more bills than you can keep up with but I'm so glad tonight that I serve a God that doesn't just sit high and look low but I serve a God that is a God of a tight place oh I got that name but it's a baby he's got to be out of some tight places well if we're going to be the kind of people that are going to help our leader break the box of what church is and break the box of what is believed that ministry and real ministry is, the first thing that we're going to have to do is break the cycle of duplicated performance. So we put it in means this. We gotta understand that God is moving in a new way. The Stress when he sees you coming. Because there really only 
said, I gotta break the cycle of being duplicated in what's happened to you in your past. Because here you are crying about this boy, you was crying about the husband and that. And I gotta come in here to break this stuff and this foolishness up. But this is the second thing he said, he said, I gotta number two, I gotta break the cycle of destructive practice. Because some of the stuff that we do in church is destructive. Oh God, oh God, have mercy. Some of us, some of us uh, bring one more people out of the church than we do bring in the church. Yes, yes, he touches 
Jesus told him a little But when the boy gets up, it says he sat up and began to speak. I don't know what he said.
it's time for us. We don't need a marketing ministry. If, if half of y'all would decide we're going to save our church a thousand dollars a year, I'm going to have a big mouth about my church and pass I'm going to allow my Facebook to be a media, a marketing tool for our ministry. Oh, yeah, you put all your mess up there on Facebook. And if your pastor can't be your friend on Facebook, shut your page down.